Tonight's lesson is how to fight the devil and his minions. The enemy has been attacking each and every one of us repeatedly, daily. He never lets up. He never quits. Because once we're born again, in John chapter 3, verse 3, we not only find a new life of love, peace, and happiness, we also find ourselves in a war. A war of the worlds between the war of evil and the kingdom of God. In World War I, there was trench warfare. And it wasn't until you came out of your trench that, and started attacking the enemy that he would really open up and let all his cannons fire and come after you. As long as you stayed in your trench and didn't do anything, he didn't bother you too much. Well, we came out of our trench. Amen. Because we are saved, as far as Satan is concerned, you have gone over the top. He will do all he can to oppose and stop you. You are now a believer, a soldier in God's army, a potential threat to hundreds or thousands of others of Satan's captives. He knows that you now belong to Yeshua forever and that he can never get you back. So since he can't stop you from being a believer, the next thing he tries to do is stop you from being an active believer. He tries to make you a dead believer. Instead of a real live one, he'll fight and try to stop you from serving the Lord and defeat you from being a good example to win others because he is afraid that he might lose others from his clutches because of you. That means you're walking on the front lines. You are the infantry. You're the one. And he's got his sights aimed at you. And people on the line, you're just the same. Once you became a believer, the enemy put you in their sights. But we have something else. God is in control. God's word says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. We should be, be aware of his devices and be on guard against the fiery darts. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Of discouragement, pride, fear, jealousy, selfishness, doubt, negative thoughts, and etc., which he hurls at us to try to hinder us. But the enemy cannot lay a finger on us unless the Lord allows it. This happened with the patriarch Job. Satan had to go to God and say, take your cover off of him and let me attack him and he will curse you. So God lifted that covering. Satan attacked Job, and Job did not curse God. Therefore, Job won. Satan lost. You know, we have a lot of things that come against us. And these things he hurls at us to try to hinder us, but the enemy can't touch us. It's only for our good if the Lord lets him, just like in Job. It's only to better us, to make us stronger fighters, to teach us lessons, or to drive us closer to Yeshua. Always remember that as a believer, you have nothing to fear from Satan. 
or any of his forces because Yeshua is with us. In fact, you have power over all the devils of Sheol, including Satan himself. God's word tells us greater is he that is within us than he that is in the earth. Matthew 28, verse 18. Behold, I give unto you power over all the powers of the devil. Luke 10, 19. So through the power of prayer in Yeshua's name, you can rebuke the enemy and order him to leave you and others alone when he tries to oppress you or distress you by speaking to your mind and tempting you with negative and discouraging thoughts. And he has to obey you. He has to flee. James chapter 4 verse 7. Don't let the devil get you down. One of the devil's favorite tools with believers is discouragement. This is probably the most dangerous tool for believers. Because if you get discouraged in whatever it is God is wanting you to do, you sit down and you do nothing. Many, many believers have done just that. They started out with their heart bursting with love for the Lord. But as they went into the service, as they started applying themselves, things didn't go well. And they were discouraged. And they sat down. And they never tried again. We are not going to let that happen. It is the loss of courage resulting in the lack of faith. Faith comes from the hearing of the word of God. Romans 10, 17. That's when our Shabbat service starts. On Shabbat, it's 10, 17. By hearing the word of God. That's why it starts at that time. So when you feel discouraged, the quickest remedy is to start praying, quoting scriptures, reading the word, and telling the devil he's a liar. John 8, Verse 44, you have to fight discouragement with prayer and the word, and then your faith will grow. The doubts will flee, and you will be on the road to victory. How can you resist temptations? A temptation is a thought or desire to do wrong. Nobody can keep temptations from coming, but you don't have to yield to them. There's a wise old saying that goes, you can't keep birds from flying over your head. But you can keep them from making a nest in your hair. Keep that in mind. You can't stop Satan from doing this. Satan did it to Yeshua. He tempted him. You don't have to accept that. You can say the same thing Yeshua said. Get thee behind me. You have no authority here. You're nothing but smoke and mirrors. You cannot harm me. Get lost. You know, as we go through our lives, a lot of people condemn themselves and feel bad and wicked because they thought or being tempted with sinful thoughts. But it's no sin when the devil tempts you to do something. It's only a sin if you yield to that temptation and do it. You know, we've got Hebrews 4, verse 15, and Matthews 4, 1 through 10. The way to resist is to get rid of temptations and negative thoughts. Is to read your Bible. Pray and think about the Lord. And good faith building, encouraging thoughts instead. Whatsoever things are true, honest and just, pure, lovely, and good. Think on these things. Philippians 4 verse 8. Isaiah says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is whose, whose mind is no, no, I'm lost in my place there. 
Yeah, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Isaiah 26, verse 3, If you keep your mind on Yeshua, you won't have to think about the distracting lies of the enemy. This is so true. When you think about yourself, each and every day, your own life, the thoughts that come to you, not all of them are good. You know, some of them are just not evil, but just aren't right. Maybe somebody is trying to get you to do something or say something. Maybe it's at work or maybe it's wherever you are. I'm retired, so I don't have a job, so I don't have anybody there doing it. But I have the television. You know, it's always broadcasting something I don't like. And, you know, it, there's always things going on. I go to the store, people cut me off in traffic. There's always little things. And it's how these little things affect you. Do you let them get to you? When they cut you off in traffic, do you curse them? And if you do, do you say, God, please forgive me? I didn't mean that. I don't have anything against that person. I don't know them. They don't even know me. Please forgive me for what I just said. Because that's what we have to do. We're human beings, and we make mistakes. We fall flat on our face. But we have Yeshua, and he lifts us back up. He dusts us off, and we go on our way with him side by side. And that's what we have to keep in mind. We are not alone. You are never alone. But you know, when we pray and think about the Lord and the good faith building encouraging thoughts instead, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and good, think on these things. Philippians 4.8, Isaiah says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. That is so blessed, in perfect peace. You know, we have praise power, but the best defense is an offense. If you really want to get the devil on the run, just start praising the Lord. Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. That's the only line you have to say, and you can say it over and over and over. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. And you have the victory. Psalms 103. You know, the enemy hates songs and prayer and praise to Yeshua or to our God, our Father. You know, if he hates this song, can you imagine... How he hates amazing grace. That must really drive him right up the wall. You know, can you imagine? Amazing grace. We have grace. No one else does. The angels don't have it. We, we are the only ones with amazing grace. By his grace we are saved. By his grace we are forgiven. By his grace we will see him. We're the only ones. Angels, they don't have that. They don't know grace. They don't know what it's like to be forgiven. Ask the ones that fell. Next time you see them. Ask them how they like it. Rebuke the devil and drown out his thoughts with praise and the word of God. There are so many songs that come to my mind that we sing right here at Arrowhead Messianic Congregation. We sing them every Shabbat. You know, we leave music playing here in the sanctuary 24 hours a day. 
There's a CD running all the time. There's music in his house all the time. There's a reason for that. We've had visitors, not of this world. We have them on tape. The cameras have picked them up. These visitors are from God. They're his angels. And they come to this sanctuary. And they fellowship here. Because this is his house. He just lets us use it. Which we're grateful for. But, you know, with the music on all the time, they know they can come here. And they're going to be in a place that they are welcome. And they're not going to be offended by anything in here. There's nothing here to upset them or offend them. And that is so awesomely great for us. Because we know they've been here. We've seen them on the videos. And that is an awesome, awesome feeling. You know, sometimes we really need help from our brothers and sisters to fight the battle. We have to fight this battle together against the enemy. We have a prayer line that you can call. We have people available before and after our services. In case of an emergency, we have people that can visit you in the hospitals or other types of emergencies. There's always people that you can get a hold of. Where two or three are, of you are gathered together, in my name I am there with you. Matthew 18, 20. This is what the Lord said. This is what Yeshua said. Where two or three of you are gathered, I'm with you. I'm right there. So the next time you're praying, just understand he's right there. Right beside you. That's how much he loves us. So we have to fight the good fight. Fight back. The best way to stop an attack is to counterattack. The best defense is an offense. Fight the devil positively. Attack, attack, attack. Don't just sit passive. Don't just sit there. The Bible says to resist the enemy, and he will flee from you. James chapter 4, verse 7. The only way the devil can possibly defeat you is if you surrender. So don't. This is kind of funny and kind of personal. But sometimes when I'm in a store... I'm riding one of those little electric carts to get around in because I don't walk too much. And I'll just be singing in a very low voice to myself, really, not to anyone in particular. But many times I've had someone turn and say, you have a beautiful voice. And I say, thank you. And kind of, you know, okay. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. I can't remember words. So if they're not printed in front of me, I'm lost. You know, I love music. I enjoy it thoroughly. I have many, many of the songs that we sing right here in the congregation at home. And they play on our players all the time. But I can't sing. But when I get outside, I look up to God and I say, thank you, Lord. Because you see, that person didn't hear me singing. It wasn't my voice they heard. God let them hear what he wanted them to hear. So whatever it was that they heard sounded beautiful to them. So it wasn't me after all. I'm still the guy carrying a bucket. Just remember that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for using me 
at that time, at that moment. God loves us so much. He loves each and every one of us so much that you ask him for a parking space. Now, how simple is that? Lord, I need a parking space. You will get one. I know. My wife and I have done it many, many times because we need a parking space. We need one close in. We can't walk. My wife cannot be out in the heat. She absolutely can't stand it. I love it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but she can't. It, it affects her physically. And so we always try to park as close as we can up front. And we have handicap plates, so that's legal for us to do. But the thing is, we ask him for a parking space. And like today, I filled up the car with gas and then drove over to the store. And I did not ask him for a parking space, and there were none. So I drove around, and Jane says, well, ask for a parking space. Lord, we need a parking space. And she actually said it, not me. Lord, we need a parking space. Well, now I've got to go all the way up and back around and down. And lo and behold, guess what? There was a parking space. When before, it was nothing but cars. He answers prayers. Now, maybe it wasn't the very first one on the row by the front door, but it wasn't that far that my wife said, I can walk that far. You know, it was just a few spaces down. But God provided it. That's amazing. When you have that kind of faith, ask him for a parking space, and you'll get one. That's the kind of faith I want everybody in this whole congregation to have, everybody that's online, to have that kind of faith. You know, back in the day, they used to call that blind faith. There's nothing blind about it. We knew there was going to be a parking space. There was no doubt. We had to drive around the block to get there, drive up one lane and down the other one. But when we got down the other one, there was a parking space. And we parked the car and went inside. So the next time you're thinking about how the enemy is attacking you and your day's not going real well, how it's too hot, how it's uncomfortable. Think about the poor people that live in Alaska and it's still frozen up there. It's still cold up there. Think about the people in Minnesota. My brother-in-law lives there. They can't get in the fields. They were supposed to start planting and being in the fields month, weeks ago, they still aren't there because the snow was on the ground, the ground was frozen, and then it started raining. And it has to dry out before they can actually go into the ground. The ground has to be dry. And every day they get it planned. It's been sunshiny for two days now. Tomorrow we're going to go in the field. And it starts raining. Imagine how frustrating that is to a farmer because he has X number of days in the year set aside for farming. That's the only time he can do it. When the sun shines on the ground, he can plant the seeds, and when the water comes, the seeds mature and they grow. And he produces corn, soybeans, and whatever else that they need. He depends, he depends so much on the Lord. His livelihood, how he makes his money, how he supports his family, how the rest of the world eats. Because we actually feed the majority of the world. The United States of America produces that much food, providing we can get in the ground. If we can't get in the ground, nobody's going to eat. It's not just us. And they're talking about now that they're going to be able to start selling uh, ethanol overseas. We hadn't been able to do that in the past. 
that'll help the farmers. But the farmers have to be able to get in the ground. They have to plant. Some of those farmers are not good believers. They may never get in the ground. But if you have that kind of faith that God will provide, he will somehow make it work for you. You may not be able to do what you think you want to do. And I remember one year when he couldn't. When he couldn't plant. But when the time came, he was able to plant radishes. They didn't eat these radishes. They just let them grow. Let them stay in the ground. It fertilized the ground for next year. And they collected their crop insurance. But they didn't go hungry. They didn't starve. This is faith. This is what it takes. Instead of throwing a temper tantrum and cursing God because it rains or cursing God because the snow fell, they just prayed and took it as it came. You know, God helps us to be fighters. And he really likes the ones who like to fight for the Lord with the weapons of his word and who thoroughly enjoy defeating the devil. I cannot imagine anything more pleasant than defeating the enemy. And even the little simple things. I need a parking space. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But you know, it sounds simple. But it's faith. And faith comes from hearing the word of God. Faith comes from reading his word. Faith comes when you go looking for it. And you honor him. That's when faith comes, and that's when it grows. And when you have that kind of faith, as they used to say, the world is your oyster. And we don't eat shellfish. <laughs> but no, the world is because you have faith. And that is such an amazing thing. We have people that are sick and even, you know, they were talking about Robert. God bless him. Robert's a member of our congregation. Yet do you know that as sick as he was before he went in the hospital, he would make it down here every Thursday night for prayer? Every Thursday night before he went in the hospital, he was here. Because this is where he wanted to be, in the house of the Lord. Thursday night is our prayer hour. That's when we are intercessory prayers for others. We don't pray for ourselves, we pray for others. And he wanted to be here. Now we're praying for him. And we're visiting him in the hospital. This is what God wants each and every one of us to do. God wants us to witness to each other, to pray for strangers, pray for people we don't even know, pray for our children, children that we don't know. I have great-grandchildren. I see them once in a while. And those great-grandchildren, they have friends that they play with. I don't know their friends, but I can pray for all of them. Because this is what God wants. We have got to cover ourselves
and cover every other human being out there. Because we are in the end times. We are in the latter days. Right now, Israel is at war. The enemy is attacking with real missiles, real rockets, and they're trying to kill real people. We don't have that happening to us. And we can thank God for that. We can thank God that our country right now is safe. But it's only as safe as our faith in our Lord. We have 50% of our country that doesn't like the Lord. Think about that. Half of the United States of America wants to do away with God. What in the world would happen to us? Hopefully, God will call us home first, and we won't have to witness any of it. Because I don't want to see that. You know, I won't go into all the different little programs that they have, but I'll stop and think for a minute how the enemy works. Seventy million babies murdered every year. Oh, they're not called babies. They're called tissue. Seventy million. You know, things just mm, don't seem don't seem possible. That in the United States of America, they can murder 70 million babies and sing and rejoice about it and think it's the greatest thing on earth. No, we believe in God. We are believers. We are warriors. We're fighters. We like to fight. We want to fight. We enjoy fighting. We get to put on the armor of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We get to carry and walk with him. Hallelujah. And in some day, in the very near future, we will be with him. And we will come back with him. And we will fight them to the last bitter end. Because that's where our faith is. Our faith is in him. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three in one. All three in one. That's where our faith is. That's where we stand. We've come out of the trench. We're over the top. And we're taking the enemy head on. We're not ashamed of who we are. We're not ashamed of what we do. Tonight when we were singing, my God, my God. Wow. I can't wait. I want to be there. After the songs of worship and praise I'd like to invite any and all up for prayer that want prayer you know songs of praise are there to lift us up and to rebuild us and to Give us the strength that we need to go on. The enemy attacks all the time. And if he can't attack you when you're awake, he will attack you when you're sleeping. Not every dream is a dream from God. Not every thought is a thought from God. But you only succumb 
if you give in to it. May God bless each and every one of you.